Hi, my name's Katie Kendrick. Firstly, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Councillor Warner and Councillor Edwardson for bringing forward this vitally important national leasehold motion. I am a leaseholder of a four-bedroom detached property in Ellesmere Port. I am also the founder of the National Leasehold Campaign, which has over 15,500 members. Let me start by telling you my story, which I have to add is very tame to, compared to the nightmare stories that I hear daily. I, like many others, was told by the developer I could buy my freehold after two years for a couple of thousand pounds. Unbeknown to me, the developer would no longer own my freehold and the, at the two-year point, and it had been sold on to a third-party investor. Apparently, this was their standard business model, but yet they failed to mention this at the point of sale. The onward sale of my freehold was detrimental to me. Not only did the price of, to purchase a freehold escalate from a couple of thousand pounds up to 13,000 pounds, some of my neighbours escalated to 30,000 pounds. The permission fees also increased. Permission to build a small conservatory from the developer would have cost me 300 pounds. Now my new freeholder for the same permission wanted 2,600 pounds. It was then that I had my penny drop moment that something was seriously wrong and my home was now being used as a cash cow. I say my home because it's not mine. I am a mortgage tenant with a landlord. Loopholes in outdated legislation has allowed this to legally happen. Houses do, have, do not have the right of first refusal to purchase the freehold. So literally the land was sold from beneath me. When I moved into my leasehold house in 2014, I never thought for one minute my dream home would turn into a living nightmare. I never realized I would spend the next three years leading a real life David and Goliath battle, fighting for the homes of millions. Leasehold is an unequal balance of power. It's a system rigged against leaseholders. I am a children's nurse, I am a mum, and I am a wife. This battle has taken so much time away from my family, I can never get back. The, import, the impact this is having on people's mental health and well-being is alarming. I have taken, I've been contacted by people wanting to end their own lives because they feel there is no other way out. This is the reality of the situation. I have helped to galvanise leaseholders both locally and nationally to speak out about this feudal, outdated, abusive system. We now have 167 MPs signed up to the all-party parliamentary group on leasehold reform in Common Hold. We have tremendous cross-party support. Local MPs, Mike Amesbury, and my own MP, Justin Maddis, has been instrumental in driving change. Whilst changing the future is paramount, we cannot forget the people already trapped in the leasehold scandal. We need retrospective action also. The government are going to legislate about future houses not being allowed to be sold as leasehold, but now that has created a two-tier system. Many in Cheshire West and Chester are trapped in the leasehold properties. Selling these properties is becoming increasingly difficult as no one will willingly enter into such a horrendous situation that we currently find ourselves in. Not to mention many mortgage lenders will not lend on many leasehold properties with onerous lease terms. This is a local problem on a national scale. We have words, words of support, but we really do need action. Sir Peter Bottomley, MP, reinforced in the House of Commons this Monday that bold action on the leasehold scandal is needed. He stated, it's as much about justice as it is about the law. I would also like to quote the words of MP Jim Fitzpatrick. Leasehold is not only well and past its sell-by date or its best before date, it is clearly at a time to do something now date. I am a firm believer it's time to abolish and not polish leasehold and I hope this council can support me and thousands of others. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you.